So the first two videos I uploaded to this channel were about how I think that Halo Infinite's combat system is broken at the fundamental level. I don't like how aiming and strafing works, but that's beside the point. This video is about tips and tricks that you can utilize to make your performance in-game as effective as possible within the current parameters. Number one, remove completely your look stick dead zones. I know that dead zones are supposed to prevent against joystick drift in-game, in but trust me, in this game, joystick drift is good because it means that third form of aim assist, reticle magnetism, will activate sooner, more often, or if you have a controller that has a nominal degree of drift at all times like I do, you will essentially have aimbot at all times. Joy-Con drift in this game is good. Now the second thing you can do to make your aiming a little bit better is lower your FOV. Now, a lower FOV tends to make your reticles seem a little bit larger and makes enemies seem a little bit closer. This is extremely important because reticle size has a lot to do with aim assist in Halo Infinite, and a larger reticle, when measured as a percentage of your screen, means that enemies are not as so small as they are compared with a larger FOV. If you have a smaller FOV, your reticle will seem larger and your opponents will seem larger, meaning that your movements and your aiming will feel much more tactile and enemies will be a lot easier to hit. You can notice a trend within Halo Infinite that the smaller the reticle gets on a weapon, the less effective the weapon is. The Commando, the Stalker Rifle, all of them are performing much worse than they would in previous Halo games because their reticles are so small. With the Stalker Rifle, you essentially have a single pixel to hit your enemy with, and if that pixel is off by a little degree, you miss. By making your reticle larger and your opponents larger, you mean that you have more, your reticle becomes much more navigable on screen, subjective, relative to your monitor. Now, the third thing you can do is kind of pressing do not use a mouse and keyboard. I know it's tempting to think that through practice and determination that you will eventually be able to make a mouse and keyboard viable, statistically you won't, and fundamentally understanding the mechanics of the way Halo's aiming system works, the way movement works, I can tell you no amount of practice will make a mouse and keyboard viable within past the 75th percentile of players. The better the player you face, the less the mouse and keyboard becomes viable. I know it's nice to have to be able to have be able to look around and reload at the same exact time, be able to jump and reload simultaneously, but the movement advantages a keyboard confers honestly are not worth it. The way Halo Infinite controls is fundamentally different compared to the MCC. On MCC, you can make a mouse and keyboard sing songs like nothing else, not even a controller. It doesn't even matter if that person you have, you're fighting has an aimbot. You can still beat them if you use a mouse and keyboard, assuming your aim is perfect. On Halo Infinite, your aim will never be perfect. Enemies can change direction too quickly, and reticle magnetism is just too much of an advantage that the controller has. On previous Halo games like the MCC, the ideal Halo player on paper is a mouse and keyboard player. But once Halo made the jump from the Blam engine to the Slipspace engine, aiming has been different ever since. Halo Infinite is fundamentally different to the MCC. I don't know of a single professional player, and likely neither do you, who is mainstreaming a mouse and keyboard at the professional level and actually getting good performance out of it. If you can name one, feel free to dislike the video, but I'm telling you, Halo Infinite is fundamentally different this time around. Crossplay is a major disadvantage to mouse and keyboard players. The ideal way to play Halo Infinite is with a controller on a high-end PC. You want to play against bots or play campaign? Fine, mouse and keyboard is actually pretty damn good. But once you start playing people who can shoot back at you, you don't want to be caught dead with a mouse and keyboard. Now the next thing you can do to maximize your aim efficiency on Halo Infinite is to adjust your method of aiming. First you get your reticle near the general vicinity of an enemy, then you zoom in and to start tracking your enemy's movement and at that point you start to align your reticle upon your opponent's target. Because players can so easily change direction in Halo Infinite, that's much less viable. You need to shoot where your opponent is much less than you would where they're going to be. Tracking your targets is much less effective in this game, so flicking your aim, especially with the sniper rifle and all precision weapons, 
is the way to go. You cannot track your target because your target can change direction so quickly. Any an, an opponent moving one direction doesn't necessarily give you an indication that the, your opponent will continue moving in that same direction. Player movement in Halo Infinite is fundamentally unpredictable. In Halo Reach, it took a few moments, a few instantaneous milliseconds in order to change direction, and this gave you a guarantee that where your opponent was moving, they would still be moving in that same direction for at least the next few milliseconds. That guarantee in Halo Infinite is gone. Because flicking is the only viable strategy for precision aim in the infinite, players with fast reaction times, really fast reaction times, with like 100 to 150 milliseconds, are going to be extremely dominant in the Halo Infinite meta. You need to be really, really fast on your right thumb to keep up with your opponent's movement. Which is exactly where my next tip comes in. I'm going to advise you to use your left stick to aim whenever possible. You have the same movement parameters that your opponent does, and so if you mirror your movement with your opponent's, your reticle, theoretically, would say upon them just the same as it would. Why would you open yourself up to another dimension, a three-dimensional, essentially, sphere of aiming possibility when you can just move your left stick around once in a while to keep up with your opponent and aim it that way? Now, in my first video that I uploaded into this channel, I explained how Aim Assist in Halo Infinite works and why I don't like it. Now I'm going to teach you how to cheese it. The first tip I gave you was removing your stick dead zones, which basically tricks the game into thinking that you have right stick movement when you don't, thus enabling Aim Assist sooner. Now I'm going to teach you how you can use your movement to throw your opponent off. We all know how a standard BR duel works. Three shots to the chest, one to the head, and if you've not missed a single shot, the twelfth shot in that final burst will come through your opponent's shields and kill them. This means that on between the third and fourth burst when you're, when you're in a battle rifle duel, your opponent is going to be moving their reticle up towards their head. But if you're moving vertically, jumping, or crouching, this means that Halo Infinite's aim assist, reticle magnetism, is going to also track you vertically. This has caused you to miss so many shots and you've probably not realized it till now. I'm gonna tell you how it all makes sense. If you have an opponent that is jumping up and you're aiming at their chest and you need to move your reticle up to shoot them in the head, remember how the way aim assist works is moving targets and a moving right stick means that the aim assist will track your target. So what you have in this scenario is that both your right stick and the aim assist are directing the game to move the reticle up, meaning you can force your opponent to overcorrect or overadjust their aim when they're trying to get that final headshot on you. Similarly, you can jump right as your opponent is shooting their second burst at you, and if your shields burst while you're at the apogee or the height of your jump and you start falling, again, aim assist wants to track you. So if you're moving down, aim assist is also going to be moving down. But if your opponent needs to move their reticle up to score a headshot on you, it means they have to now fight the aim assist. Now you understand why I hate aim assist in Halo Infinite and why I want it to return the way Bungie did things. Not only does Halo Infinite's aim assist make you land shots that you don't deserve to hit, it also forces you to miss shots that you deserve to hit. Now, I'm sure that integrating all this information into your strafe and perfecting the perfect strategy that takes advantage of your opponent's aim assist at exactly the right moment to force them to miss shots would require Bruce Lee moments of coordination and dedication and a lot of practice to get right. You now understand what the ideal strafe of Halo Infinite is. It's tight. It doesn't go very far You very over very short distances of space. You want to have a lot of verticality. The goal isn't to force your opponent to track you over some distance. It's just to throw them off and keep them off long enough before they can readjust their aim. In previous Halo games, moving back and forth wasn't so effective. The game would actually nerf your momentum so that there was a small delay before you could change directions. And so in previous Halo games, the ideal strafe was much more elongated with sporadic bursts of movement. 
There was an emphasis on more of, on speed rather than trickiness. You wanted to move fast and to be as mobile as possible to force your opponent to keep up with you rather than in Halo Infinite. What you really want to do is throw them off and keep them off because readjusting your aim is deliberately impossible by Halo Infinite's design. Now, in my first video, I mentioned how one setting, controller setting, is withheld from you, and that is the curve. The manner in which the joystick accelerates from its lowest value to its maximum value is pretty much the same for everybody else. You can set the max input threshold, and you can set the minimum input threshold, which is essentially the dead zone, but you can't actually design what happens in between. And I mentioned in my previous video that the Halo Reach DMR, the curve on that weapon, accelerated much more aggressively than it did in Halo Infinite. In Halo Infinite, you are essentially given two categories of aiming, micro-adjusting and turning, whereas Halo Reach gave you the option of micro-adjusting, macro-adjusting, turning around, and also looking around. The Halo Reach acceleration curve was much, was much more varied and different parts of the curve were used for different parts of moving and looking around. So when it comes to controller settings, you wanna have it all. You want the first uh, few millimeters of your thumbstick to be really slow and you want the last few millimeters of your thumbstick to be quite fast. And the way you do this is by using acceleration. Now I want to explain how acceleration and max input threshold work together because acceleration doesn't kick in until you've pegged, which basically means you've hit your max input threshold. Max input threshold does not help you at all while you're moving your thumbstick toward the edge. It only comes in and adds a multiplier value at the end of your thumbstick curve once you've moved your thumbstick all the way to the edge. So you want your acceleration to be rather high, that way you can turn around quickly. Like I said, you want the first bit of your thumbstick to be quite slow and the last bit to be quite fast. This means high max input threshold, low dead zones, and a sensitivity that is medium in the middle. I use 3.5, the pros tend not to go over six, but I have sources saying that actually every sensitivity above five is the same. Now, in order for your settings to become like that of previous Halo games as much as possible, you need to adjust your max input threshold so that it is moderately high, but not too high. You can actually get your max input threshold quite high, and 343 confirms through the settings menu that higher max input volumes will increase the variance in the curve. And while you don't directly get control over the curve, this allows you a small degree of influence over said curve. Variance in this context means the difference between the lowest value and the highest value. So if you want it all, like I said that you should, you want to have a moderately high max input threshold because it makes it so that your sensitivity or your acceleration gets faster to a higher sensitivity sooner. After you've done all of this, aim assist will still have a great degree of sway over your aiming, but hopefully you'll feel that you have control over your reticle and you'll be much more confident in your ability to place it over your targets. I've never played Call of Duty Warzone, but I think it actually gives you the option to choose a, a separate acceleration curve setting that everybody can have a preference for. I want to see that same setting in Infinite because I don't like the way the curve accelerates in Halo Infinite. I think in previous Halo games, the way the curve was designed, it gave you much more versatility and variability in what could be accomplished. Whereas in Halo Infinite, the entire joystick is just designed for aiming, whereas in Halo Reach, maybe the only the first 30% of the inner of the inner ring of the joystick was designed for aiming, and everything else was just designed for more utility. Previous Halo games, the way their controls were handled, they just gave you more utility and put you they, they made you feel like you had greater control over looking around in the environment. I don't like how Halo Infinite handles competitively, and so I can't really get into ranked or playing this game seriously for any length of time. But if you do, I hope these tips help you get to Onyx rank quicker and more easily than otherwise. And if you, they have helped you, please like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you can be notified whenever I upload a new video. I'm trying to make Halo Infinite the best Halo game ever, by providing feedback or whatever else I can do to make the future of Halo as bright as possible. Thank you.